Hello and welcome back my friends and in this video we're going to be going over how to take our health and have it go down as we're being attacked by senpai chicken over here. So let's get into it. The first thing that we have to notice is that we have an orb and that it gives us some health which is kind of nice. That means that we'll start with at least a little bit of health. We're not really going to mess with that too much right now. What we do want to mess with however is that when our chicken friend here notices us and we're within range, he is going to attack us and take some health away from us. So in order to do that, we have to have an attack script in our enemy script. So let's go into enemy script, double click that. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a couple of variables that can store the information that we're going to need for our attack. First, we need to know what the damage is actually going to be. So I'm going to make a comment here, and I'll just say attack variables. So the double slashes here just makes everything after it into a comment, something that our code will ignore. And I'm going to have a public int damage. And that is going to set it so that our damage is something. We'll set that just equal to 5 for now. Next, we need to know what the attack range is. So public, and this is going to be a float attack range. We'll set this to two. So now that we have that basic information down, let's go into our update field. And already we have it so that we only run some code if we have a target in mind. In this case, it'll be our player. So we have it so that no matter what, the enemy is going to look at our target, which will most likely be our player. Now let's go put in some code that checks to see if our player with his, is within attack range. So what we'll do is first figure out what the player distance is. So in order to figure that out, we have to make a float that will ask that the player distance will equal a vector three because we're working in three dimensions dot distance so this will figure out the distance of something in three dimensions. And then it'll be the transform dot position. And that will be the position of whatever that this script is currently attached to. So in this case, it'll be our chicken enemy. So this here tells us the start position, transform dot position that is what this script is attached to. Then we need to know the target's position. So luckily we already have that target.transform. So target.transform.position. So there we go with that. That will get our distance between the chicken and our player. So next we have to use that and say if our player distance is less than or equal to our attack range then we will attack. Now we haven't made an attack yet, so let's make a new function in here. Down here, we'll type in private void attack. For now, let's just test what we have so far. So we're going to simply write a debug log out. So every single time that our enemy has acquired our player, and they're within the distance of attack range, then we'll call the attack function that we just created, which will right now simply say attack. All right, let's give that a shot. All right, let's go see what happens. I go over to my chicken, he notices me, and attack. There it goes, looks like our code is working. All right, let's pause this, go back into the code and actually make it so they'll take health away from the player. So here we are, we have a uh, attack function. However, if we remember our player has a give health function, right, which is down here, but it doesn't have a, a take health or a take damage function. So what we need to do Let's create a new function inside our player controller script. We'll simply say public void take damage 
int amount. It'll, and this function will be basically the exact same as this, only we're going to say the player HSP will equal player HP minus amount. And we're still clamping that in between 0 and 100. And then it will update the health bar just as it did inside the give health command. So let's save that. Go back into our enemy script. And now, just like we found the player before inside our pickup script, we need to get the target's component of type player controller. So this will get the player controller script attached to our target. And that will say that we can take damage. And then we'll put in the variable that we made, damage. So this entire script says the target that the enemy chicken is currently locked onto, look inside its player controller script, and then inside that script should be a function called take damage. And we want to take the amount of damage as previously stated inside the attack variable damage. And there we go. So let's save that. Now let's see what happens. Give our player some health. Wander over here. Chicken notices us. And as soon as we get close, our health drops to zero almost immediately. So that happened really quickly, right? Let's see what happens if we change our damage instead of five to one. Now, by the way, I don't have to change this in my script here. This is a public int, which means that it should be accessible inside the Unity editor. See, damage is set to five. So if I set that to one in here and hit play, it should automatically assign that to have one damage. Let's see. The attacks, and again, it goes by really, really quickly. It's not really like he's pecking me, it's just my presence being anywhere near chicken just completely devours my life force which is not really what I want. I kind of want distinct hits. So let's make it so that our script before hitting first checks if there's been a little bit of a cooldown period or a bit of time in between each attacks so that the chicken can wind up and attack us again. So we're gonna need some more variables for this. The first variable is we're going to figure out what the attack rate will be. So we'll say public float attack rate and we'll set this to one to be about one second and then another public float and this will keep track of the last attack time so every single time we attack we'll reset this to be the current time and then we'll run a check to see if at least one unit has passed since that attack time so let's go into our update script here and right here we checked if the player distance is close enough within attack range inside that we are going to nest another if statement a nested in if statement is such simply an if statement that is inside another if statement so this is a nested nested if nested inside this which is nested inside this so anyways our if statement will say if time.time, .time, which is the current time in Unity, minus last attack time is greater than or equal to the attack rate. So if the time, current time, minus the last time equals or is greater than the attack rate, that means that more time has elapsed since this last attack rate time. So if more time has elapsed, we are going to then attack. Now that we have this, now we have to just make sure that we set our last attack time after each attack. 
So after we give damage to our player, we'll say that last attack time equals time dot time. So let's go in here and see what happens. We go in, boop, 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 and see every one second our chicken is attacking us and pecking us. And we can see our health just goes down a little bit every single time. And that's basically it. So as you can see, our player does definitely take damage. However, at the end, he doesn't really die. He's still kind of just wandering around with zero health, which for now is fine. How to end a death or restart scene in a later video. But for now, I think this is good enough. And next time we're going to go over how to make our player attack back and get that sweet, sweet revenge on poor little chicken here who won't have any idea, you won't see it coming. It'll be great. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like, subscribe for more content like this. And if you have any questions or think that we're doing a great job or a terrible job, please let us know in the comments. It is super appreciated. And we very much love to see any communication that you can give to us so that we know how we're doing. Uh, we also have some cool merch. Uh, we have Ninja Boy here on a t-shirt and on a sticker so if you're interested in that click on the link if you need more help you can always find us in our discord server link is also in the description jump in there and join the chat it is a great time and you'll have both me and some other very very gifted coders and they're being able to help you out all right until next time thank you very much and have a great time coding